told him, Pastor, Pastor, your wife is here. Your wife is here. So he opened his eyes and called me. Then I answered, I began to ask him, do you want to leave me and these kids and go? That you should not do that. He asked me where is he? I told him, Borromeo Hospital. He said that I should take him out of this place if I love him. Or if I don't want him to die here, I should take him to his uh, doctor at um, Oweri. As we were going, my husband called me that I should take care of the children and the ministry that he has, um, uh, he has built a house for me that I should not worry, that I should take care of everything, that there are some people called to go quick that is among them, that his journey is ended. And I began to cry now as a widow and I began to recollect what I will suffer in future. So I was lamenting and crying. They were holding me that I should, I should not cry. I know my condition, but I should hold myself. When we get to Federal Medical Center, so time is late. They say they, will not, they, will, they won't attend to us. So the doctor is not around. So one doctor and one nurse came out to come and check what happened. They say, we said that this man have, have an accident. He said, okay, there is no time. This man is already a dead man. We should take him to mortuary. They rushed to this St. Eunice Clinic and met Dr. Josie, the one we met up there. Then he thoroughly examined him and said he's off. That it's better we remove him and put him to the mortuary. I was told he was involved in a motor accident at Onisha. When I examined him, I looked at the chest. There were no respiratory movements. I listened with the stethoscope. There were no breath sounds. I tried to look at the heart, the cardiovascular system. There were no heart sounds, and the patient had no pulse. I looked at the eyes. The pupils were fixed and dilated. I just made an impression right away that the patient was dead, and he should be removed to the mortuary. I don't know what to do again. My, my heart ran out of me. I was shouting. Then I asked their village is close to Oweri. I told them, let us run straight to their home and inform his father that his parents is at home. We proceeded to their hometown. Then when we reached there, his father came and joined us. Then in the, in the night, midnight of that Friday, the wife came here with the dead body. After seeing it, in order to avoid a crowd of people, I took him with the wife to the mortuary. When they brought him in here, he was being brought by a father and a wife. Then there's no life in him, no heartbeat, no any kind of any sign of uh, breathing. They accepted him as a dead, as a corpse. Then after all those, I checked all around the body and everywhere is so stiff. That was what gave us the strength to start our procedure. When I sent him in to the second room, the last uh, slab. The mortuary man took our name. We gave him 1,000 naira to continue his work. Then on Saturday, I left here to Anisha again to bring home the children and the wife and my own first son that is living at Anisha. I brought all of them home here. As I brought them, we were here sleeping together before the wife cried. But I began to call upon the name of the Lord. I began to remind God of his promises. And number one, this year God told me in Isaiah 61 that I shall not experience any violence in my home again, that I shall be called the city of the Lord. So when anything that happens, I will hold God on that word. I say, this is one of the violence, it has come again, and you promised me that I will not experience them again. Why this one? So that is always motivate me to hold God firm so that that violence will disappear from my way. And uh, this, uh, another verse that always appears to me is Hebrew 11.35. Women receive their dead bodies to life. So the moment I read this place, it always put force in me to hold God and act. So that night, when I remembered all these things, I said, no, it cannot happen. I must do something to prove God again. On Saturday, while we were sleeping in the night, 
the wife of my son. For I took him to the mortuary. He said, the woman said that the husband is disturbing her, that they should carry her to Anisha for Reverend Bucky. After some time, my, my father-in-law considered them both of us. He, he went to them and planned with them. Before I could come, they have already put my husband inside the gasket and I was with my first son, Victor. So when we reached there, I hide the child somewhere so that he will not see the father because as he questioning me, where is my daddy? I told him, your daddy is in the village. When we reached the village, he asked me, where is his daddy? I told him, he's at Tanisha. So I was deceiving the little boy and he was crying. So the moment they put him inside the ambulance, they pushed me. I ran inside the car, with the front side with my son and with his brother. So we started coming down to this place. When we reached at the GRA, I saw somebody, I asked them, do you know if Bonke has come? Bonke was here on the second day of December 2001 to commission the Kingdom Life World Evangelism, which is the evangelistic arm of this great ministry. We put out the advert, we even invited people to come that is going to pray for the sick, and is going to pray for the initial people. Then we are on the platform around 1 p.m. Bonke was preaching. Suddenly somebody came to me and they told me that they brought a man with an ambulance, a coffin. Both of us were sitting together at the same place inside the church. Before an usher quickly ran in and told us there's an emergency. They are trying to bring in a corpse into the church. And we have to run down from the fourth floor down to this place. And coming down here, we met an ambulance car. Already a pastor has already ordered them to go up. And, I, and we told the ambulance people to come down here. And I told them, first of all, go and bring the man's wife. I would like to talk with her first. And they now brought her over. And we are just down there at the shade. I was asking her what actually happened. I felt that the anointing will be so high here, that the anointing will resurrect my husband. That was what I felt before coming down here. Both of us, we consulted together. I told him that it would be a very big embarrassment bringing a corpse inside the church. And what do we do that wherever we are, that God is, that if God wants to perform a miracle for the man, the place where the man is does not really matter. Then the security men, because we have security men from the state government and the federal government, the SS people, the mobile police unit, they were there, they ordered the ambulance to stop and demanded that they will open the casket to make sure that they didn't bring in bomb, telling people that he's a dead person. When they looked at him, it was a coffin, it was a dead person. They ordered them to close the casket. Then that was the time. 